mga itsuon na abli na ang lugnanan sa ating ginoong Yesus kay siya na banhaw o buhi. Alleluia! Alleluia! Palapakan na po ang ginoo. Greet in your kapado. Happy Easter! Happy Easter! Malipayong pista sa pagkabanhaw. Kung naapay lain na abrihan mga itsuon, ikaganiha, naapri na ang atong putahan sa jubilee. Pag-apri in yung jubilee year, agi pagsaunog nato sa ika-500 years na nga pag-abog sa atong yuta ni ining Kristohan yung pagtuo. Kamo sa inyo hang pagsulod sa Jubilee Door. Sigpit ang pultahan. Masayon misulod anang dako nga pultahan. Apang ninyo ng ginoo, ang pultahan sigpit ba ingon sa kaluwasan. Mulay na yung pultahan kung dili ang ating ginoong Jesus. Kanang Jubilee Door, kanang Porta Santa, Holy Door. Nagtayong din ka na that Jesus is the only gate to salvation. So katong ka mga nag-antos na bulag sa init, maayon ko na sa ato, vitamin D. No? Importante na sa ato. Naghulat mo, uh, nanuig ako ninyo kayo na initan, pero lagi sakripisyo. Huwag sa inyong pagsulod, kung doon ay inyong kasing-kasing na buo pagkutuli sa Diyos, need to be here, sa ito papa this year. Kita nga mo agi musulod ni pilgrimage o musulod sa puntahan sa mga holy door. Patagaan yung pagpapas sa silot sa atong mga sala. Tungod kay Karon. Jubilee Hill. Ipapati sa Diyos ang iyahang kamanggihan tago, kamalimulon o pagkamaygugmaon sa natong tanahan. Again, Aleluya! Si Kristo na banhaw atong daigo na palapakan ng atong ginawa pag-usap. I would like to take this opportunity to share with you the pastoral letter coming from the CBCP uh, prepared for us by our CBCP President, Most uh, Reverend Romulo Valles. I will not read everything but the important part for us to recollect paghinundum na paghinundum sa kasaysayan na niabot ang kristohan ng pagtuo sa atong nasod. Kung ginaos sa ato ang paghinundum ni ini, ang atong kasing-kasing magmapasalamaton ni ining tuiga na naghandong kita 500 years of Christianity in our land. O apong matangiana sa paglambo na ng simbahan Nahimutang kabahin ni ining tanaw sa simbahan. There has never been and will never be a moment in church history when the bearers of the gift entrusted to us by the Lord will not be both holy and sinful, noble and flawed at the same time. And such was the case with the first Christians who came to our blessed islands in the year 1521 and encountered our native ancestors for the first time. As in most situations in history, God did not seem to mind sowing the first seeds of the gospel through flawed human beings like the Portuguese explorer Ferdinand Magellan and the members of his crew in the 1521 expedition from Spain. 
who were all lay Christians. Mga lay po po silang tanan, with the exception of one ordained priest in their company, the chaplain, Father Pedro de Valderrama. These men were mostly mercenaries. Ang ilang tuyo, pato sa lahing lugar, aron uh, conquer. But, they almost instantly turned into missionaries the moment they discovered the fertile soil of, of goodwill in the natives they had encountered in Samar, in Leite, and Cebu. They had come from distant Spain with a mandate, with a mandate not to evangelize, but to find an alternative route to Malukas. Nita silang dalan, tayo sa Malukas. They had arrived like hapless strangers in dire need of shelter. They were sea-beaten, weary from the long and perilous journey through the South Pacific Ocean, afraid of hostile natives, wary of pirates, hungry, thirsty, and sick. That was the condition when they arrived. Of the five ships that departed from Spain, only three made it. One got shipwrecked and one deserted them. They even had to deal with conflicts and mutinies among themselves while at sea. If they were in search of gold, these explorers knew they had found it, not underground or in treasure chests, but in the hearts of the nine simple fisher folks who quickly disarmed their defensiveness with their childlike simplicity and friendliness. Pagkamay galaon sa ato mga ancestors, they were surprised by these natives who made them feel welcome, gave them food, fish, fruits, coconuts, who allowed them to pitch their tents on the island of Homonhon and later Lemasawa, help them care for the sick, bury the dead, and worship their God. Kung ang naka maabi-abihon ang atong mga naunang mga ancestors, they who thought of our ancestors as pagans, as godless people, were surprised to find God in the generous hearts of these natives who opened the doors and treated these weary travelers with compassion. They also went out of their way to help them procure enough food provisions to be able to reach the Malukas and eventually return to Spain. So touch Mas Magellan had been, by the spontaneous gestures of hospitality, friendship, and generosity that he had observed while in the company of these natives, that from being mercenary, he suddenly shifted, acting like a missionary in all his awkward and limited knowledge of the Christian faith. Napugos si Magellan. Mahimo siyang missionary. Bisa no guasay angay. Pigafeta, the historian or the chronicler, itong nagsulat sa journal, could not contain his own emotions as he narrated how odd he was about the kindness of these gentle souls to them. He described in great detail how they had gone out of their way to build them a platform made of bamboos in Lemasawa on which they could celebrate the first mass on that Easter Sunday, March 31, 1521. Sa ulong na ito ang anniversary karungad lawa, yan ang first Easter mass. And another one in Cebu, when they celebrated the first baptism, on the third Sunday of Easter, April 14, 1521. So we will also have a reenactment sa dunya sa third Sunday of Easter. 
Magellan did not pressure them to do all of this at that point. They did it in the plain spirit of pamunuluyan, pagtapakatao, pagpapipagkapwa-tao, which are the genuine vessels of evangelization. At the first mass in Limasawa, the Gafeta describes how the families of Raja Colombo and his brother Raja Siagu even volunteered to join them, how they too knelt at the consecration with them, how they offered the, them gifts of two slaughtered pigs and assisted them in planting the cross, the icon of the cross, which means the whole world to us now, the symbol of God's eternal love and the price the Son of God is willing to pay for love of humankind. This cross of our redemption became the first Christian icon ever to be brought to the consciousness of our ancestors. If Pigaveta had lived in our times, we would probably be saying these natives put them to shame. They who claim to be Christians, they who thought they were bringing us the Christian faith, must have felt like they had discovered it instead in the beautiful hearts of our ancestors. And the baptizing became practically a mere naming of what they had discovered, namely God's grace already at work in them. So why should we be surprised about the swiftness in the process that led to the first baptisms in Cebu? The woman named Hummamai, the wife of Raja Hummabon, whom they named Huwana, was just acting out the childlike faith of these people when she chose the Santo Nino as gift. These natives had accepted them as friends without malice, like little children, who instinctively respond with trust, even to strangers, and express affection to them, no matter what other hidden motives they might have. And as always, this hidden agenda eventually rear their ugly heads, since they are always Satan's favorite strategies for nipping in the bud the seedlings that have sprouted from the seed sown by God. So nagsugod sa nindot kaayo, nagtanong, hinahinay, masulod ang yawa, no? arong pagtibulaan. As in the parable of the field planted with the good seeds of wheat, soon, Satan gets busy at sowing the seeds of ill will, hidden agenda, and wrong motives that have always served as a huge challenge in the work of evangelization. But the mystery of it all is that the great sower allows both the weeds and the wheat to grow together and thus the sifting, sifting only at harvest time. In those 46 days, from March 16 to May 1, that God got busy sowing the seeds of the gospel on the soil of friendship and goodwill between Magellan's company and the natives and their chieftains, the devil also got busy sowing the seeds of hidden motives and political agenda that would lead to a whole string of treacherous acts on either side. Magellan shifts again from being missionary back to being his mercenary self, playing the patron to the mabon and insisting on his court tax exemption in exchange for an empty promise to fulfill the mabon's political ambition to reign supreme over his fellow chieftains, including the insubordinate Lapu-Lapu of Mactan. Soon, Magellan's new brief brings him to his enemy, Nemesis, when he gets deceived by the treacherous gift of two goats from the added chieftain of Mactan, Rahasula, and his and his overconfidence leads him to a trap that makes him fall tragically in an ambush on April 27, 1521. Soon, even the Malay slave Enrique, who used to serve as the loyal interpreter, would turn around and become their enemy. He would turn from a facilitator of dialogue to a reinforcer of conflict 
when the survivors refused to grant them the freedom he claimed he deserved after the death of Magellan, his master. How accurately St. Paul has expressed it in his second letter to the Corinthians. We hold this treasure in earthen vessels, earthen vessels, Murakanang pot, very dosa, coming weak, fragile, so that it may be clear to us that its surpassing power comes from God and not from us. The treasure of the Christian faith came to us through the earthen vessel that was Spain and its own unique brand of Christianity in the 16th century, which was both noble and ignoble, sublime and treacherous, missionary and imperialistic. The bearers of the icon of the cross of Christ soon also brought with them another cross, the cross of colonial rule, which we eventually repudiated in Salikwai Nato. Katong colonialism. We found the reason to throw away this cross of oppression precisely because we embrace the true cross of liberty, the cross of redemption, the cross of God's unconditional love, the cross that gives us human beings our true dignity as sons and daughters of God. This is a good destination sa mga Pilipino nga moingon. Nga nga mag-celebrate man tayo 500 years na ano-ano diri din sakpan na tagisakot man ka. Actually, that was true. Colonial rule, but kita mismo ang ating mga ancestors. Bisamit ko ay ito ng colonialism. Pero wala na itong dilabay ang tumuod na cross, the true gift of faith, atong gihuktan ang tumuod na cross sa kaluwasan na nga nagpabilin sa ato ang kapilimbang. Amen! We therefore look back and say to ourselves, despite all the pain that we have had to go through, we will forever be grateful for this cross. After all, we receive the Christian faith as a gift, not from Spain, but from God. Albeit through this flood, but well meaning Christians from Spain and Portugal. And since we count this as grace, we also presuppose that God knew well enough to endow our ancestors with the intelligence to accept what was good and reject what was evil in what the Spaniards had brought with them. We must humbly admit, though, that humans as we also are, we are obviously not always succeeded in that endeavor. It took centuries centuries, hundreds of years for our ancestors to be able to discern the mixture of mercenary and missionary spirits in all the human and earthen instruments that serve as bearers of the precious gifts of the Christian faith. Eventually, they also saw the difference between those who came as true shepherds and those who acted as wolves in sheep's clothing. Those who truly cared for them and those who were cruel and abusive to the flock entrusted to the pastoral fair. Here we are, five centuries later, my dear brothers and sisters, we continue to learn to sift the grains from the chaff. Mindot nga image, nagpadayon ka sa pagpili kung sa tong maayo o kung sa ang gautan. Ang pinood niya humay o sa ditong mga tipasit. But the faith that we continue to embrace, the Christian faith, even after we rejected colonial rule, must mean that our ancestors did not equate Christianity with the treacherous economic political agenda of the colonists. At some point, the faith that we have embraced was no longer alien to us. Katong Christianismo, dili na banyaga ka nato. It had succeeded in taking root in the fertile ground of our innate spirituality as a people. With our own unique gifts and charisms from the one spirit that we receive at baptism. Sa sambingay pa sa katong magkadayong klaseng mga yuta. Ang atong kasing-kasing, murag katong yuta na patunok. Diin 
ang liso sa pagkuo ni Turok o ni Lambo. Amen! Kana ang pagbalik lang tao na ito mga isuon sa kasaysayan, sa pag-abot, sa Ibanghilyo, sa Kristohanong kinabuhi sa atong naso. And now, brothers and sisters, we celebrate this Jubilee year and I, as your bishop, mag-ampun niko alang ka natong tanan na magmapasalamat na itong kasing-kasing na nabunyagan ang matag-usa kaninyo ni bawat ni iming kristohan ng pagtuo. O gani, nagpabilin man, di may kahuyang, di may kamaayo, kita isip simbahan. Hinaot, ang mga kahuyang na ito, makabalik ka, matangaw o mapasaylo, arun kita mahimong kining uh, reconciled na community. O kanunay na ito i-celebrate in sa maayo ka na ito. Let this year be a year of looking back in history. Sama sa the attempt ni ining atong pastoral letter to remind us so that we can understand better who we are in the present as communities of disciples. And an opportunity also to look forward in the next 500 years with the same missionary zeal that made it possible for us to receive the Christian faith. What we receive without cost is also what we give without cost. Diri atong tema, gifted to give kita. Cardinal Padre expressed this so well when he said, the gift must continue being a gift. If it is kept for oneself, it ceases to be a gift. By God's mysterious design, the gift of faith we have received is now being shared by the millions of Christian Filipino migrants in the different parts of the world. Maybe namin mga pariente, kapamilya, to us abroad. Dala nila, kiling Kristohan ng pagtuo. Sila'y magsabuag dito. Even if wala nila tuyuan na nahi mo silang misunari. It is their zeal that must move us who have stayed in our homeland to ask ourselves how are we sharing this gift? Kanayin mong kalipay sa pagpuo di naunsan nyo na pagpaambit sa uban. To repeat the words of the Holy Father how we are caring for those who are hurting and living on the fringes of life. So dear brothers and sisters, Happy Easter kami ng tanan, Happy Remembering no? kanang unang higayong na nagmisa sa Pilipinas this day. First Easter Sunday and we are all commemorating that o kita nga misunod sa Jubilee Door. Let us be humble in front of the Lord. Ating surrender na to kaniya ang atong kinabuhi diya sa iyahang gugma o kalooy. Again, Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Atong dayo na Diyos sa makusog na palakas.